day. Today is indeed a very blessed day, a day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. There is no other day like this. Today is beautiful. Today is wonderful. No matter what any of us might be going through, it has been so all the years. You might be laughing, someone might be crying. But at the end of the day, such is life. And we pray and thank God for giving us room to show our teeth, to laugh, to smile, and to talk. I always encourage myself when I look at the media uh, people who come to uh, read news, whether on radio or on TV. They are human beings like us. They have their challenges, and yet it is a duty call. They come, they put everything behind them, and uh, discharge their duties. And so whatever you might be going through, I want you to understand what is meant for life is meant for life, and you must live up to it. And may God give us the grace to go through let me use this opportunity to welcome the church and also to welcome our brethren who will be watching us on Facebook and on YouTube. Like I always say, the blessings we are going to enjoy here on the church platform and in this room, your portion will never miss you. And so we pray that God will reach out to you. Whenever you listen to uh, the, the message or you watch the video, try to share if not subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, do so and watch the videos and be blessed. We thank God for today. Today is yet another blessed day. And we are in the season of Christmas. There are a lot of questions going on in people's mind, including those who believe in Christ and those who do not believe in Christ. At the end of the day, all the years we have spent on earth, we still have many questions because we, unfortunately, we have not been well informed. But today we pray God that we will start from somewhere and we will build it up and we will come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And so I want to talk to us on a subject I have teamed. Why do Christians celebrate Christmas? Or let me see it. Is Christmas biblical? Is Christmas biblical? This is one of the fundamental things people must know. Is Christmas biblical? I wrote down some things that I want to read to us. The celebration of Christmas and 25th December by Christians is to be considered as a counteract to both the Jewish festivity and the Gentile festivities because what I see is that the Jews used to celebrate the 25th of December and they have a feast in the Hebrew word called Hanukkah which we call it the Feast of Lights, the Feast of Dedication, or the Jews used to call it the Feast of the Maccabees. There are other celebrations, the other part of the world. I mean people who were not Jews, and yet, not Christians. 
they were celebrating the sun during 25th of December. And so there have been some festivities before the word Christmas emerged. And so you should know this as a Christian and build it up. Why as a Christian? You have to celebrate Christmas. Because Christmas is not being celebrated by Christians alone. Christmas is worldwide celebration. And so if Christians do celebrate and non-Christians are celebrating it, then you should do. You should understand that the reasons might differ. The reasons why Christians celebrate Christmas cannot be the same as non-Christians. You should understand that. I want to take it easy to help you here. One thing we have to understand is the fact that the 25th of December existed before the word Christmas came. 25th of December existed before the word Christmas came. And so we should understand that the word Christmas has its own meaning. And 25th of December has its own activities before the word Christmas came. And further to that, Christ, the one we celebrate, was not born in December. And so we should draw the line between the 25th December, Christmas, and the birth of Christ. This is how I want to start with us. There are many questions we have to ask ourselves as Christians. And if you follow me this way, and may God help us to understand, it will erase every negativity. And wherever you go and explain this, people will understand and come to know the importance of Christmas. And so, if 25th December existed before Christmas, the word Christmas, what was being done in 25th December? Like I said last Saturday, during our um, program, I said 25th December came about among the Jews through a man called Judas Maccabees. What happened? We say, let me forget about history and say, a Syrian, a Syrian king called Antiochus Epiphanes was able to conquer the Jews and rule over them. This man was evil. He made the Jews burn scriptures and God has told the Jews not to eat from pig or swine. But this man forced the Jews to sacrifice swine in the temple of God. He also erected the statue called Jupiter that he is a God. The Jupiter, it is a God that they should all worship. And by the help of the Romans, a family called the Maccabees were able to defeat Antiochus Epiphanes. And when they defeated Antiochus Epiphanes, because during the time of Epiphanes, the people were living opposite God who is light. They considered that era as darkness and death. Because Anytime man is separated from God, his maker, he is dead. Like I said, the Bible says God asked the earth to bring out trees. And so 
without earth, the tree is dead. Before God created fish, he created the sea. And the sea teamed up with fish. And so without the sea, the fish is dead. And so God gave man life. And so without God, man is dead. And so in the era of Antiochus Epiphanes, the people of God, the Jews, were separated from God. And we call it the Dark Age. The people died spiritually because they were disconnected from God. And so when Judas Maccabees and his brethren, by the help of the Romans, were able to defeat Antiochus Epiphanes, they were able to cleanse or clean, consecrate the temple. And when they consecrated the temple and made the temple holy again, they needed to rededicate it back to God and not the Jupiter. And the first time they were able to light the lights in the temple was 25th of December. And during this time, they decided that whenever it's 25th December, they will light candles or whatever light all around. And so people will sit down and enjoy light against all the dark time of Antiochus Epiphanes. They were also told the courage of Judas Maccabees to encourage the youth to stand for their nation. And so, this is when the Feast of the Jews, called the Feast of Dedication, was birthed. The Feast of Lights. You can see that from the book of John, chapter number 10, verse number 22. Jesus came to meet this feast. When Jesus came, the Jews were celebrating the Feast of Light. On the Jewish calendar, sometimes it will fall on December. Sometimes also it falls in Dece um, on November. Sometimes it falls in December, according to the Jewish calendar. Uh, but the first time they started this feast, it was 20 feet of December. Amen. It continued through time till Jesus came, like I said. And so before Jesus came, 25th December was there. And the same 25th December was being celebrated by non-Jews. Even though the Jews were celebrating this as a feast of light, or the feast of dedication, or the Hanukkah, or the feast of the Maccabees. The people who were not Jews, we're also celebrating it. The Gem uh, Germanic or the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, the Satan, the Satania, Satalia, Satanalia, Satanalia. There were, there were the celebration of the sun. The Germanic celebrated what we call the Yule, Y-U-L-E, the Yule. And the Romans were also celebrating uh, the Saturnalia. And all these were celebration taking place on 25th of December. Today, 25th of December has a name. And the name we've given to 25th of December is Christmas. And this word is a coined word that the Christians who came to know Christ as the light of the world, recorded in the Bible, even in John chapter number 9, they could not remove the festivity from the system 
But they decided to make over and that if we have to celebrate, then we have to give a name to it. And so they believe that they are celebrating not the sun, not the light of the Maccabees, but they are celebrating the true light, Christ. And so they coined the word for that day and they called it Christmas. Christmas simply means Christ Mass. The word Mass simply means service. Christ Holy Service or Christ Holy Mass. The Eucharist, Holy. The word Eucharist means Holy. Christ, Eucharist, Mass. Christ, Holy Service. And so, whenever it's 25th of December, by the Romans who came to know Christ and some other Christians, they said, let us also celebrate Christ. Let those Jews who have not come to believe on Christ or in Christ celebrate the Feast of Light. We must also have something to celebrate. Christ. Christmas. Let the people who are not Jews who celebrate the Yuli and other sun worship as light. Let them celebrate. But let us who have come to know Christ from among the Gentiles who were not Jews but now we are also not Gentiles but Christians. Let us also celebrate something. Christmas. Christ Holy Mass. And so what we have to understand is the fact that till today, Christmas has become worldwide ceremony. The whole world celebrated. Some of the people who celebrate this are not Christians. And we Christians are also celebrating. And so we should draw the line between Christians and non-Christians who are celebrating Christmas. And so the question we Christians are to ask ourselves is why are we celebrating Christmas? And why the 25th December was Christ born on 25th December? The answer is no, with capital letter N, no. Christ was not born in 25th December. The reason why Christ was not born in 25th December is the fact that when Christ was born, there were shepherds outside. And if shepherds go out, it means it cannot be winter as we see December as winter. It cannot snow as we see in winter, snow. And so if shepherds were outside during the time of the birth of Jesus, then it cannot be in winter and it cannot be in December. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I would have loved that we start from verse 8, but you might not know that we are talking about Christ. So it's better I start from verse number 1. I will read from verse number 1 to 7. My wife will read from verse number 8 to uh, 15. 
So verse number one, Luke chapter two, verse number one to seven. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Conerius was governor of Syria. Verse 3. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. Verse 5. He went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Verse 7. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn or motel or hotel. My wife will continue from verse 8 to 15. Verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior. Uh -huh. Who is Christ the Lord? He is called Christ the Lord. This is the message from the angel. Uh -huh. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in, sw in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 13. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace, good will, good will toward men. Amen. 15. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. Amen. Amen. And so Christ was born, not in winter, because the shepherds were out there. The angel came and said, today, in verse 10, today in the land of David, or in the city of David, a savior has been born. His name is Christ the Lord. Today, and so the day the angels were out there was when Christ was born. And so it was not winter. And so it can never be 25th of December. We will come to the question, why then do we celebrate the birth of Christ on 25th December? But before then, I want us to draw the line between the celebration of Christmas and the celebration of his birth. Because his birth was not 25th December. And so if we are celebrating 25th December, which has been now renamed as Christmas, and we Christians are celebrating the birth of Christ, then we should understand uh, that the world celebrates the same day, but they are not celebrating Christ. Am I making sense here? The world is celebrating the same Christmas with Christians, but it is a different agenda. Let me give you some of the things you see the world doing. 
They go out there, they buy uh, toffees, uh, chocolate, egg, and many traditional and customary things. The focus was decoration, eat. If you go to America, what they call uh, uh, what turkey, 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 and so it is part of their festivities, but it does not reveal Christ. It does not reveal Christ. The world go to shops and buy alcoholic beverage. They drink their head up. And some in the process lose their life. Christ's bet was to give life. The line we Christians must draw between the celebration of Christmas, the world standard, and the Christian standard is that we Christians are celebrating life. But the world is celebrating Christmas. Should I repeat it? We Christians, we are celebrating life because actually that which we call Christmas, actually that which we call 25th December was not the date Christ born. But we have chosen to celebrate Christ on that day. And so we are not just celebrating the feast. We are celebrating his birth. Amen. And if you are celebrating the birth of somebody, you need to have understanding. Why? You have to ask yourself. And what? Because if your boss is your boss birthday and you have to attend to your boss birthday, I'm sure you understand with me your preparation and your gift will be different from any other. Your friend, your neighbor. And so the value you place on the person, the celebrant, will determine how you celebrate him. And you can only place a value on the celebrant depending on what you have benefited from him. Amen. Amen. Am I blessing you? And so we have to draw the line. Christmas is not about going to buy alcoholic beverage and drink. Christmas is not about knockouts. Christmas is not about the decoration. There is nothing wrong decorating your house. I would do too. But Christmas it's not about the Christmas tree. Even though I will set my Christmas tree just to make the season look beautiful. But Christmas is to be celebrated first in our hearts. Appreciating life. What life? The life God gave to us. If my wife can help us read again from verse number uh, uh, 10, verse number 10 of Luke chapter 2. Listen to how it goes. Verse number 10 to verse number 15. Listen. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Uh -huh. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. When the angels came to the shepherd, and so what you have to celebrate, no fears. Uh -huh. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Listen, I have come to bring you good news that will bring you joy. Why are people just going about decorating places? Are they that much joy, joyful in the occasion? People are celebrating what they don't even know. Could there be any true joy? I am bringing you good news of great tidings. Good news of joy. Great joy. Good tidings 
of great joy. And so, it is joyful and it is a good news because it meets up with our needs. What is good? It is not good though if what I am looking for is food and you give me a shirt. Yes. It is not good if I need money and you just come and give me clothes. It is good because it meets our need. Hallelujah. Please do continue. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. All people, not just the Jews. It will be to all people. So if you want to know why, people don't even have understanding. People don't even believe in Christ, and yet they are celebrating him. The news is a command. Whether they like it or not, Christ will be celebrated because it's a good news to all people. Jew and Gentile alike, male and female, children and grown up. The news is to all people. And it's a good news. Whether they know the significance or not, they will celebrate. Whether they know or they have placed value on the celebrate or not, they will celebrate. For it is for all people. Amen. Uh huh. For there is born to you this day. There is born to us. Huh. He is born to us. He is born to you. A life to give birth means a new life has emerged. And so we Christians should have this understanding that we are celebrating life. Today is born to us. What is born to us? Continue. In the city of David, a savior. A savior. Who is Christ the Lord. He is not just a savior. Christ the Lord. Twelve. And thus will be the sign. Wait. Of he is the savior. Who is a savior? The one who has come to save you from what? From destruction. He came to save us. Not from just our sins. He came to save us from God's anger. He is a savior. When you believe in him, you will not be destroyed because he has come between you and destruction. Today, a savior has been born. And more than that, this savior is Christ, the Lord, the master, the Adonai. The word Christ is a Greek word, Christos. It's a, a rendition of the Hebrew Messiah. In English, it's the anointed one. There were many Many saviors. Even Judas Maccabees, his brother, said he was the savior. No. If you put the definite article there, we must know who. The one who is the savior. The savior. The Lord. Christ. The Lord. Is one. Many were spoken about him before his birth. And so no one can just come and take his place. Whoever claims to be Christ the Lord, the Messiah the Lord, we must trace to the law of Moses to find out if his birth was in line with what the prophet said and what the Lord says. Moses was a Messiah. But he was not the Messiah, the Lord. Gideon was a Messiah. But he was not the Messiah, the Lord. Joshua, David. The word Messiah simply means a deliverer, a savior. The one who says, and all the people are mentioned 
save Israelites from certain destruction, but they did not save the world because they were not for all people. But the one we are talking about is born to all people. All people. And he is not the Messiah or the Christ only to the Jews, but to all people. To all people. And so all people must celebrate him. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we Christians should draw the line between celebrating Christmas and celebrating his birth. Please continue. 12. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. Amen. Amen. And so this is it. Amen. When the angel finished, other angels came to praise. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And their message was, verse number um, 14. What was their message? It says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, not just the land of the Jews, on earth, the entire earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Anyone who will come to Christ has been favored. And so when you are celebrating him, you are not just considering alcohol, knockouts, palm trees, etc. You consider salvation life. You were not worth it. And so you celebrate his life as you were dead or about to be destroyed and he came in to save you. Hallelujah. And so, if you read from verse number 16, come in the Bible says, so the shepherd hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at the shepherds, what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them in her heart. Next Sunday, we will take it from the Matthew Gospel. But today, I want us to understand as Christians, if you are celebrating Christ, there are questions you should ask yourself and answer them. Why am I celebrating Christ? Is it about his death? Because he said we should remember his death. No, we are celebrating his birth. But he did not say we should celebrate. Why? So you must find an answer to that. Why we are celebrating his birth. The last scripture we We'll read all two scriptures. John chapter number 9 and Isaiah chapter number 9. John chapter number 9 and Isaiah chapter number 9. I will read John chapter 9 verse 1 coming and my wife will read. Isaiah. 
John chapter 9, verse number 1, come. the Bible says, As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Verse 4, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Verse 5, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Whilst I am in the world, I am the light of the world. This is what relates to the Jewish festivity, the Feast of Life. That the Jews who are Christians must celebrate Christ and not Judas Maccabees. If you go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1, come in. My wife will help us read. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 1, come in. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1, come in. Nevertheless, the, glo the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed. As when, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, in the Galilee of the Gentiles too, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Three. Amen. We end it. Mm. If we continue to read from verse number six, you will see unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. It is talking about Jesus who will come as the light of this dark world to shine upon those who dwell in darkness, in death. Darkness means death. And so his birth has brought us life. If I have to add something quickly, let me add John 1 verse 9. John 1 verse 9. John 1 verse 9. And we are bringing the service to a close. John 1 verse 9. To help you understand that when we are celebrating Christmas, we Christians are not celebrating the festivity. We are celebrating life. His birth. We are not celebrating the feast of dedication. We are celebrating the light of the world. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse number 9, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Verse 10, he was, we talk about true light, and then he said, he, we are talking about human being here. He is the true light, not the light of the Maccabees. But the light of the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. Like today. People celebrate the Christmas without recognizing him. He is the true light. Not the feast. Of dedication. Not the feast of light. Not the feast of the Maccabees. Not Hanukkah. We are talking about the true light. And so when we celebrate Jesus, we are not just celebrating the festivity. We are celebrating his birth. Though it did not take place in December 25, but we can celebrate his life. 
is everyday celebration. Not a day, but every other day of our entire life, we must celebrate Christ. Every other day of our life, we must celebrate Christ's birth because that has brought us peace and salvation. The next question we will answer next Sunday. Why the gifts? We will see that also from Matthew. That the shepherd, during their visit, opened their treasures and offered. In Luke, they did not give detail. But in Matthew, you will see the details. And so, children of God, we are almost there, 25th December. But I want you to understand, even today, you must celebrate Christ. You can crown it on 25th December as Christmas. But you must still celebrate him today. You cannot treat every other person around you the way you want. And then have time for Christ and celebrate him. Christ is in every other person around you. We all have clothed ourselves with Christ. We read from Galatians. And so when we celebrate Christ, we are celebrating each other. Yes. And God is happy when we add value upon ourselves. Christ says, if you love one another, then you are my disciples. We celebrate life. And that life is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We thank God for today. At least you've heard something. And it is my prayer you build it up and have the grand understanding of Christmas. Draw the line between 25th December, Christmas, the word Christmas, and his birth. And so you will celebrate it meaningfully. Shall we pray? And so Jehovah God, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and adoration. We are grateful unto you for our life. We thank you for all you have done, all you're doing and about to do. Who is like unto thee in heaven, on earth, and the earth in it? There is no one like the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We commit our lives unto your hand. And we pray that you grant us understanding to experience the importance and the, and the value and the benefit of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is life. If we have not done this, henceforth in the coming years, may we have this understanding. And any way we've gone wrong, have mercy. Because he was born to save us. May your name be praised, Father. And may your name be glorified. For giving us Christ, the gift of life. To save us from not just sin, but from perishing. Mm -hmm. And so as we celebrate, may you add and increase our joy mm -hmm. and our peace. This we ask, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. And the saint said, Amen. 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 Amen.